Hey there guys, I'm the Royal Gorilla and you're watching my guide to the easter eggs, secrets and strategies to the new Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Die Rise. Die Rise, or The Great Leap Forward, is set in post-apocalyptic China and follows on from transit. The map makes up the interior of two skyscrapers. However, one of these skyscrapers has partially collapsed, leaving an entire section precariously hanging upside down from the remaining structure. This makes verticality an influencing factor on gameplay which has never been achieved before in a Call of Duty Zombies map. The map is full of narrow, claustrophobic corridors and huge drops that will kill unwary players. There are four main sections to the Die Rise map. The first is a hotel and a shopping centre area where you first spawn. The second is the top half of this building which has now been inverted and hanging over the chasm below. There is a sprawling sweatshop area and the rooftop of an intact skyscraper. Dotted throughout these areas are a number of elevators which can be activated once the power is turned on. These however cannot be entered or controlled in a conventional sense, so players will have to ride on the top of each elevator. In the spawn room, an elevator can be entered, however, once done so, it will plummet to the bottom of the lift shaft, which then leads into the sweatshop area. As I mentioned before, verticality is a huge factor while playing this map, and your gameplay style will have to change to incorporate it. At times it can be useful. For example, using a lift to get out of a tricky situation. But a lot of the time, you will find yourself falling to your death after not seeing a small chunk of broken floor. There are many drops that are simply too high to survive falling, so in key areas, mattresses have been added to break the player's fall. This allows the player to jump from any height without fear of fall damage. The upside down areas can be a challenge on their own, let alone with a horde of zombies out to get you. Steep gradients make navigation difficult and many doors are too high to enter as they are located on the floor, or in this case the ceiling. The upside down environments can be disorientated, so don't enter the area without a good knowledge of your surroundings. Die Rise is the second Zombies map to feature an opening cinematic, the previous being Call of the Dead. This cinematic can be seen when playing solo and takes the place of the loading screen. The cinematic shows how the Green One characters found themselves in China and also suggests that there is an even greater power of evil influencing the events. Additionally, in the sequence we witness the death of Rustman, who is decapitated by one of the new Nova Crawlers. However, towards the end, he is still alive and the characters appear to have just arrived, complaining of deja vu. It may be possible that the first half of the cinematic was in fact the future, and at the end of this map, Rustman will die. There are two new buildable items in Die Rise. The first of these is the Trample Steam. The Trample Steam works in a similar way to the Flipper in Call of the Dead and can catapult zombies across the map. To build the Trample Steam, players will need to activate the power to gain access easily to the crafting table, which is located on a few floors below the spawn. All the components needed to build the Trample Steam are located around the spawn area. To build it, you will need a metal grate, an air compressor, a flag, and a set of bellows. Once crafted, the trample steam can be placed and will launch zombies who walk on it as well as players. For this reason, it can be used to access areas of the map previously unaccessible. The second new buildable item is called the Sliquifier. The Sliquifier is a primary weapon and is crafted on the bottom floor of the sweatshop building. To build it, you will need a canister, a handle, a mannequin foot, and a peculiar pot thing. Once the Sliquifier is built, it can be exchanged for a current weapon, and it will then disappear from the crafting table. For the remainder of the game, it will be available from the mystery box, so every player can acquire it in one game. The Sliquifier is a very powerful wonder weapon. It can explode zombies into a purple liquid substance, and will also make the ground slippery, causing zombies to stumble. The final buildable item in Die Rise is an identical nav card reader to transit. The navcard reader can be built on the rooftop area beneath the radio tower. Just like transit, the navcard table requires a meteorite, an electrical box, a radio, and a plank to build. There are three new wall weapons featured in Die Rise, which have previously appeared in single player campaign and multiplayer. The first new weapon is the SVUAS sniper rifle. This can be found on the floor directly below spawn in the shopping centre area. It can be purchased off the wall for 1000 points. The SVU is not as powerful as other sniper rifles in Zombies, but is however necessary for the main story easter egg. Found in the same area as the SVU AS, the player can purchase the PDW57 off the wall for 1000 points. 
The PDW-57 has one of the slowest fire rates for a submachine gun, however the largest amount of ammo and is effective up to high rounds, therefore making it a recommendable weapon. The final new weapon is the AN-94. The AN-94 is slightly harder to find than the previous weapons. The players must enter the upside down building and make their way down the elevator shaft. At the bottom the player will be able to purchase the AN-94 for 1200 points. The AN-94 is a preferred weapon while playing and I advise that you purchase it. It is the best assault rifle due to its ammo capacity and is even superior to the Galil. The first main location in Die Rise is the spawn area and the three floors below. The area appears to be a hotel and a shopping centre. Here you can find the Olympia for 500 points, the M14 for 500 points, the SVU AS for 1000 points, the PDW57 for 1000 points, the B23R for 1000 points, and three perk elevators which randomly change perk. However, Quick Revive will always remain in the first elevator. The crafting table for this area can be found on the lowest floor and is only accessible once the power is turned on. The second location is the overturned building. This is the top half of the spawn building which had been inverted. Here you'll be able to find the mystery box, the M16A1 for 1200 points, the Galvanuckles for 6000 points, and the AN94 for 1200 points. The third area is the sweatshop. This area consists of two floors and is a separate building to the other two locations. Here you can purchase the AK-74U for 1,200 points, the Remington 870 shotgun for 1,500 points, and also the power is located on the top floor of the sweatshop. There are three perk elevators which spawn a random perk machine each game. The final area is the rooftop and the floor below. On the rooftop you can purchase claymores for 1,000 points, Semtex for 250 points, and the Bowie knife for 3,000 points. On the floor below, players can find the MP5 for 1,000 points. This location has three elevator shafts, which are the same as the sweatshop elevators. In each game, perks can be found in elevators which are activated once the power is turned on. These perks randomly spawn in different lifts. The elevators, however, cannot be entered, and to travel on them, the player must jump onto the roof of each elevator. The elevator allows players to access inaccessible areas such as the rooftop level and the bottom floor of spawn. There are a total of 6 perks in Die Rise. Quick Revive, Juggernog, Double Tap, Speed Cola, Mule Kick and Who's Who. Mule Kick makes a welcome return allowing players to carry free weapons and Who's Who is a completely new addition to Zombies. Who's Who allows players to respawn instantly after being downed as a ghost-like being from where they can either continue playing or revive yourself. If you do not revive yourself, you will lose all your weapons and perks. However, if you do revive yourself, you will retain all perks and weapons besides Who's Who, which will need to be repurchased. Pack-a-Punch works in the same way as the perks. It will spawn in a random elevator and will be available once the power is turned on. At varied rounds when playing on Die Rise, a special round will begin which is similar to Hellhounds from previous zombie maps. During this round, minions or advanced Nova Crawlers will attack the players. They are fast, can do short teleports, walk on ceilings and walls and can kill lone players quickly. Once the round is complete, the final minion will drop a max ammo. As always, Die Rise features an intricate story easter egg. I won't be showcasing this, but I recommend that you check out the NGT Zombies for all the latest easter egg developments and guides. Die Rise contains a musical easter egg which can be activated by holding X or Square on three teddy bears. The first teddy bear is found next to the SVU AS in the shopping centre. The second is found on a ledge in the Buddha room. And the third is found in the power room on a desk. I'll leave the song as a surprise to anyone who wants to check it out for themselves. Scattered throughout the map, there are a number of televisions which will be making digital noises. If you hold X or Square on one of these, for a set period of time, a radio message will start to play. This message will detail extra story information regarding Die Rise. Once the spawn elevator has dropped, the players will be able to access a number of keys found at the bottom. These keys allow the players to call elevators to the floor by using it on their control panel. Once used, a key will respawn in a random position on the map. PHD Flopper can be found in Die Rise. 
However, it is believed to be a troll on the community by the developers after rumours spread of its inclusion. It can be found in a spawn elevator shaft and cannot be reached. Getting to high rounds and die rides can be difficult due to the close quarters of many areas. However, there are a few areas that are good for making zombie trains. The easiest one to get to is the shopping centre. Either the first or the lower floor are suitable as they have a decent sized area, however may become difficult during higher rounds. The advantage of this is that the PDW57 is available close by for ammo. Another good area is the large multi-leveled room in the inverted section. Trains can be run upstairs and downstairs, however no ammo is readily available in this area. On the plus side, this is the largest open area to run. Other good areas include the Buddha room and the rooftop, however these are quite compact and may become difficult on the higher rounds. Well guys, that was my guide to the easter eggs, secrets and strategies to the new Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Die Rise. Definitely one of my favourite maps and a lot better than Green Run in my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to drop me a like, favourite and sub to show your support. I've been the Royal Gorilla, over and out.